Hi friends, today I am starting a series on cell and molecular biology. My reference book is Cell and Molecular Biology by Gerald Kopp and this series is for CSIR UGC NET. So let's start. History and discovery of cells. This is pretty basic. We already know these things. So it was Robert Hooke who for the first time observed cell. And he also called it cell. He observed them in cork cells. And actually, in actuality, what he observed was cell walls. And for this, he was respected. Later, Leuven Hoke, who was actually a cloth and button seller. But in part time, due to his uh, enthusiasm and curiosity, he used to make microscopes. So he for the first time observed microbes under, under the microscope and he informed about this as soon as this information came in, uh, into light he became a celebrity. Later Sheldon and Schwann, Sheldon is interestingly a lawyer turned biologist and Schwann was a zoologist. So they proposed cell theory, although they failed to explain origin of cell. So the first point of their theory was all organisms are composed of cell. And, and the second point is cell is structural unit of life. Now we all know it is not a complete definition of cell. Later came Rudolf Verco and he gave explanation about origin of cell he said cells can arise only by a division from a pre-existing cells it's a saying omnicellula e cellula okay that's about history and discovery of cell now we talk about basic properties of cell so first stage cells are highly complex and organized Although they are unicellular, uh, although they are tiny, we cannot see them with our naked eyes, but they are highly complex and organized. Each and everything, if we watch, like for example, if we see the epithelial cells present in the lining of intestine, we observe that the top surface, which makes the lining, the top surface of the cell has my tiny projections called microvilli it helps in absorption and the basal part of the epithelial cells have mitochondria for the mitochondria is needed for obviously oxidative res uh, respiration to make ATP now this ATP helps in uh, ATP provides energy for all the transportation across the membrane you see so hence we can say cells are highly complex and organized. There is a fixed place for each and every organelle including the nucleus. Next is cell possess a genetic program and tools to use it. Genetic program means obviously nucleus, ribosome, RNA, all the enzymes that are involved in genetic information to transfer from one generation to another even for the other cellular processes as well. Third is cell can double itself that is cell can divide the division can be however equal or unequal equal divisions we can see in somatic cell but to observe unequal division we can give an example of oocytes uh, female gamete they divide unequally next point is cell can acquire and utilize energy we know that about ATP and cells are capable of metabolism that's why we call cell the functional unit of life as well. Cell has all the enzymes to carry out basic metabolic process. And you know what is metabolism? Sum total of all the chemical reaction which take place inside a cell. So cell is capable of metabolism. Now cell can perform various mechanical activities. Mechanical activity uh, suggest us it should have some strength and the strength comes from cytoskeleton especially actin protein 
cells respond to stimuli this stimuli can be environmental or even the neighboring cell as well and they respond in very highly specific way next is cells are capable of self regulation you see cells have very specific mechanism its dna rna and protein nucleus is called brain of the cell center of the cell and it regulates all of it uh, regulation like if we see if a dna fails to replicate properly that's called mutation and cell also has a mechanism to self destroy so that's how self is capable of self regulation so these are the basic properties of cell which obviously we will learn later in very detail now we'll talk about types of cells cells are fundamentally of two type prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells prokaryotes are bacteria and eukaryotes are plants and animal cells which are right here i have taken these images from ncert books obviously you can take the references from that okay now difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell we have been learning this since we learnt about the cells so the basic difference i will only talk here prokaryotic cells have nuclear envelope absent it has special space for nucleus but it's not quite a nucleus because it lacks the wall which separate nuclear region from rest of the cell this region is called nucleoid however eukaryotic cells they have nuclear envelope and which separates nucleus from rest of the cell next prokaryotes have naked circular dna we are calling the dna naked because in eukaryote dna is always in complex with protein and it makes a chromosome histone and non histone protein we know that but in prokaryotes the dna is naked and circular next in prokaryotes we do not see any cellular membrane bound organelle however eukaryote has abundant organelles mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum lysosome etc now prokaryotes are not diploid i was so confused about this so i read it in detail and what i found out is in prokaryotes only one strand one single dna is present and which obviously explain why prokaryotes are called non sexual that is they cannot be differentiated into male and female while eukaryotes they are diploid and that means they have two set of each chromosome and the last difference is self explanatory prokaryotes are non sexual while eukaryotes are mostly sexual although there are unicellular eukaryotes which are not but we know that moving on to similarities between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell Yeah, this is little uh, refreshing. This is little new. Okay. In both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, plasma membrane have similar construction. That is, they are made up of phospholipid, and their nature is selectively permeable. They both have code genetic information coded in DNA. They both have basic mechanism of transcription and translation very similar, although. we know uh, that in eukaryote these mechanisms are little complex but you see the central dogma this is the same in prokaryote as it is in eukaryote their meta metabol basic metabolic pathway of uh, respiration atp formation these are same the mechanism of membrane protein synthesis is also very similar and last proteasomes the protein digesting structures are also similar in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes that is for enough for uh, part 1 you see if i have made any mistake please comment and uh, i will also learn something please like share and support and uh, i'm making this series for june 2020 csir june 2020 so please keep watching next videos thank you very much